Hey guys, I'm John with Hops and Brews, and thanks for tuning in today as we are going to be discussing my second round of doing my March all beer diet. What was it like? What were the benefits? Was it easier this time around? Did I lose any weight? But first, we need a beer. Cheers. So some of you might know I've been doing a all beer diet for the past couple of years and this year I decided to do something a little bit different by modifying it. Um, instead of only beer, I wanted to see if there was a more sustainable, easier way to do this and still get results. Now the original diet, if you need to go see, I have a full really long video on it about doing only beer for 46 days like the original Polliner Monks. This time, however, I wanted to see if I could do something a bit more, well, easy on me, easy on my friends and family, and also easier on my wallet. So today I'm gonna to break down for you what I did and the results I got from it and the price it cost me. So first, let's talk about what exactly did I do this time around? Well, the biggest thing is I cut the days down from 46 to 31. So it is just the whole month of March. Originally, this is supposed to be a 46 day diet, the full length of Lent, uh, but I wanted to cut that back down to be a nice sustainable beginning of March, end of March, I'm done. There we go. And the second big thing I did was I did technically eat something during the day. So what I did this time around is what's called an OMAD diet or a one meal a day diet. So what I did, I did not have a breakfast, I did not have a lunch, I did not have a snack, I did not have a dessert, but I did have a very small dinner. But what did I have? Well, uh, I didn't stick to a extremely hardcore, I'm gonna count calories diet, no. What I did was try to maintain a basic, enjoyable meal that most of the stuff I actually really like. In fact, all of it I really liked, it was just fine. Um, but like say, carbs, noodles, breads, I stayed away from that because I'm getting enough of that. Now, if the deal was like, say, a pasta dish, yeah, I loaded more proteins and vegetables in the sauce than the pasta, but I still had the pasta. So, you know, that's just the way the meal is made. Yeah, I can't get around it. However, if there was, say, a steak meal, a chicken meal, or something along that lines, I stuck with a chicken thigh, broccoli or asparagus, maybe a little bit of rice, and that's about it. And on top of that, most of my dinners were significantly smaller than my standard meals that I would normally have. Just cutting out the carbs in general already made that. But I stuck with a higher protein and green item. Now, you might think that that's not a whole lot of food. But at the same time, while fasting, your stomach does shrink and it gets full relatively fast. So actually, you got full on that lower amount. Now, the third thing I did different because there wasn't a 46 long day and I was eating some food, I needed a way of still burning extra calories of the food I was having and trying to combat the loss of that extra 15 days I was going to lose by not doing it the full length of time. So I did throw a 30 minute a morning workout routine. Now, this wasn't a high impact routine at all. It was just a basic, this is a very basic four days a week, 25 to 30 minute workout, and that's including stretching and cool down. So really it's more like 20 minutes worth of work. Well, it's March 1st, 5 a.m. Let's get going. Now I busted a sweat, but I wasn't exhausted. Um, yeah, so overall, those are the three big changes that I did. 
Now let's move on to kind of my daily routine and schedule of what actually happened. Now, because I knew what to expect doing a full hardcore 46 day, absolutely no solid food, protein shakes or anything, I kind of already knew what to do and I stuck with that routine. But I needed to wake up early just to still be on time and be on schedule with everything in my life. So my morning routine consisted of me waking up at 5 a.m., which is about an hour earlier than normal. Wake up, you know, go work out, and then do my shower. And then I help the family get ready, you know, wake up the kids, go to school, prep everything like that. Uh, during this time, when I woke up, I pounded down uh, 16 to 18 ounces of water, then worked out, then took down another 16 to 18 ounces of water. So already in the morning, I already had 30 ounces of water in me. And now essentially that is my breakfast. Um, I do have a daily vitamin I'm allowed to take and that's what I took. Then I would go to work and I would take my uh, 64 ounce bottle of water and drink that throughout the day. I would then wait till lunchtime and if you have following the show, we'll have seen all of my wonderful little shorts that I did daily about me going to grab a lunch. And you can see all the beers I bought and how I bought them and everything through that. And I'll get into that a little bit later in pricing. Now, most of my lunches consisted of a very high ABV. I think the lowest was 8%, highest was 10.5, sometimes 15 if I went to the local tap room for something really nice. Um, but majority of the time, it was a 9%, 19.2 to 3 ounce can of beer. Now, during this, uh, it takes a while to drink it. So I'm sipping on that for about an hour or so. And also I'm sipping on my 64 ounces of water. That is essentially my lunch and snack till I get home. Drive home, I drink the rest of my water. So now by 5 a.m. to 6 p.m., I have consumed over 90 ounces of water and roughly two servings of beer, eh, give or take the high ABV and percentage wise. So 6.30 rolls around and this is the point I actually have a meal. Again, it is portion controlled. It is high protein, no carb, um, kind of the things that uh, you would expect on, say, a diet, you know. Okay, again, I didn't stray away from butter or fats or anything like that, but I uh, tried to stay away from a lot of carbs, a lot of sugars, a lot of extra things that you might have on side. You know, just stick to meat and veggies, and that's basically what I tried to have. During that time, I would consume another 16 ounces of water, and then after that, I would have another beer. Um, sometimes I would have a beer before dinner, and sometimes I have a beer after dinner. During that time, that is usually more a 12 ounce beer. So around 8, 8.30, the kid goes to bed and then uh, I can then consume another 12 ounce high ABV beer. So by the end of the day, around nine to 10 o'clock, I have consumed four servings of beer, three beers, four actual servings, possibly more if you do the calculations of ABV to you know beer ounce count wise, because one serving of beer is actually 12 ounces of a 5% beer. So if I have 12 ounces of an 8% beer, that's actually closer to one and a half servings of beer. Get my point? Okay. So my check-ins of, hey, this is beer number one. Well, it's one beer, but it's one and a half servings of beer. Understand? Okay, great. So go to bed, wake up, start the whole thing over again. So that is the routine I kept. So how was my energy level, day, everything going? This is where we start taking a turn from the original one. Now, if you want to know how the other one happened, I say go check out the other video. It's actually quite an interesting uh, phenomenon that happens with your body of how you actually have more energy and you kind of almost have this focus. It's weird, like it's basically, it's like a, a key, ketone state. The interesting thing about this is you never get to a keto state quite as hardcore as that version. You get there, but there is some downsides. Now, last time when I did this, uh, the hunger pains subsided around day four and you were able to just cruise on after week one and you didn't feel hungry at all. Now, this is problem number one that I found with this version of a diet. Because you are still constantly digesting food, you do crave food longer. And it takes a lot longer for you to get over that, oh, I'm on a diet and I haven't eaten anything phase. In fact, it probably took over a week plus. 
So you're talking 25% of the time you're on this, you're on that like, I'm hungry, I just wanna eat, and oh my gosh, let's go, when's the day gonna end? And that is going to be around a lot longer. Now, there was also another phenomenon that I didn't quite understand. Now, it could have been a psychological issue on my end, could have just been whatever, but I think the best way I was able to describe it to people was that idea of you know that you're gonna have a meal at the end of the day and you're gonna enjoy that succulent chicken or steak or hamburger, whatever it is, and you're just gonna either golf it down. And that was another hard thing. It's like not to eat too fast. It wasn't a big meal, so eat slow, chew. <laughs> Once you learn to do that, and that took a couple days as well. However, it's that after lunch, in the morning was fine because you have all this water in you and then you have that beer at lunch and you're like, oh, okay, this is fine. Three, three thirty, four o'clock hits and you're like, I am hungry. Do I have another beer to get me through this or do I wait to have dinner? And because I was at work and I had to drive, I would not consume a beer. Now you have to sit there and think, okay, if I consume this beer, uh, I'm not going to want the water I need and to actually flush everything out, say, for my liver and have everything be good and easy to go. I need to drink over 100 ounces a day of water. But if I consume this 12 ounces of beer, I don't want any more water for quite a while and I need to drink it. So you have to force yourself that part and that's harder. So then the hunger pains kind of like, you know you're gonna have a meal and the closer you get to that time, you know you're gonna have a meal you start subconsciously thinking, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm starving, I'm starving, but you're actually not. It's like if you have to go to the bathroom and the closer and closer you get to the bathroom, you feel that you have to go to the bathroom even more. I think it's just your subconscious saying, oh, I need to get there faster to get that relief that you're going to have. And so therefore it's harder to hold in, or at least you think it is harder to hold in, just like it's, you feel hungrier than you actually are. You know what I'm saying here? So that is a, a harder battle. It got better throughout the month, but it stayed around longer than last year where you just went completely no food and your body already accepted, I don't have any food to eat, so here's what I'm going to consume. Um, clarity wasn't as much, it is there. It's basically, I got the exact same results, it just wasn't as much. It was right around, I'd say 65%, 70. Noticeable, but not like, wow, this is awesome. But however, the downsides too lasted longer. Bathroom was a bit interesting, because last time it was pretty easy to go after a couple days, because you're just consuming liquid. Um, yeah, so this like last year was one of the most talked about questions I got was like, how do I go to the bathroom? Well, this time, because you do technically have some food in you, it, it's odd because you switch back and forth because there's a time and point where my day is mostly liquid, but then there's one part where there is some solid food in there. So you would wake up and your first and second bathroom break was liquid. <laughs> Easy out and good to go and you know, there you go. So usually what happened was uh, you wake up and you have to still pee a lot because you're consuming a lot of water, but that's good for you and your liver. So it was a really nice visual way of tracking, hey, how hydrated am I? So that was always nice. So then you have your first, uh, well, bowel movement. Um, and because of the day before most of your morning and afternoon up till evening was a liquid diet. It was a liquid bowel movement, right? Easy, uh, not a whole lot of mess, but there is kind of a big explosion. You know, it, it's just, it's just, think of it like a geyser. But then the evening kicks around and the day before that time you had solid food. So then there's something different. So then it's like, changing a baby's diaper again and it's it's not solid and it's not liquid it's kind of pasty <laughs> so and sometimes it's easy to get out and sometimes it's not uh thank goodness for the squatty potty and a bidet let me just put it that way <laughs> um so there's that aspect if you all really wanted to know about it i'm sure you did
Now, as far as like say energy, I stated earlier, you're getting roughly around that 65, 70% benefit of it. And that is true in this way too. And the best part too is that negative and positive reinforcement is still on track with it. And the nice part is too, because I was doing that morning workout, it actually helped out even more so. The protein in that food allowed me to do my workout. And again, that's why I didn't keep it too high impact. But by doing that workout after the first week, my energy level was up a lot longer and I could sustain it a lot more. Now I was really tired at the end of the day, but beforehand last year, I was wiped out. I mean, I was falling asleep on the couch. Now this time I was able to rough house and play with my kid and my nephew and their friends and all of that fun stuff and still do work outside and still, you know, do chores around the house and, and help out with my wife, go do physical labor. And yes, I was tired, but I had just enough energy to do that and clarity to do that. And I didn't feel exhausted to where I was going to crash on the couch and just fall asleep. Um, sometimes I was able to even stay up for, you know, an extra 20 minutes, say on the weekend, be like, oh, I'm going to sleep in. So that's fine. Um, didn't need to, I felt pretty tired, um, cause I wanted to keep a pretty consistent schedule, but that was the nice part about it. So the energy level was higher, but this time I found the energy level to be more sustainable, um, and make it last a lot longer. So I really enjoyed that aspect about it. So now let's go ahead and talk about the beers and the cost of this beer diet. Now in total, I did a lot less beers than I did last year. Now last year I did 201 beers, but this again was 46 days. Now for 31 days, I consumed 105 beers. Now this totaled into $165 for the whole entire diet. But now with the bottle return costs of all those 105 beers, you're looking roughly around a $10-esque, $10, $10.50, you know, mark, the total costing of $154. So roughly what that equates to is right around $5 a day. And that in itself is not a horrible deal. Now, if you're someone like me who knows they're about to do this and goes and starts saving their bottle returns ahead of time, this didn't cost me a dime. So that part is actually even better. So for a total, I actually spent zero. <laughs> so that was nice. Now, if you want to go see how I bought my beers, when I bought my beers, all that fun little adventure stuff, go check out the YouTube shorts, my Instagram page, or my TikTok page, all hops and brews for those daily videos. All right, so let's go ahead and get into what most people want to know about this. Weight loss, right? Now, last year when I did that extreme version, I did purposely gain weight for it because I knew I was going to lose a lot of weight and I lost more than I even expected. I lost over 32 pounds. I was <laughs> toward the end there. I was like, Oh wow. Uh, I'm getting down to, to really skinny level. Like, <laughs> but this one uh, was actually a bit more of an interesting thing during the time. It wasn't until about week three that I could physically notice a change. Um, Beforehand, you can notice the change a lot, a lot faster because, well, you're just consuming nothing but beer. Um, this one, it took till about week three, closer to the end, and I was like, oh, I'm noticing something different. Now, what did I lose? Well, it wasn't 32 pounds worth. Now, this was just under 14 pounds. I lost a total of 13.8 pounds in 31 days, which actually is still a lot. But my biggest surprise was actually the transformation of including that workout and the toneness in my body and arms. And I thought actually, in my opinion, the results kind of came out almost a little better than last year. Personally, I kind of liked it better. Uh, this was something that seemed to be a little bit easier, more to maintain. I, this felt more like something I could probably do for a longer period of time because, well, actually I could. Um, and you could start slowly tweaking it left to right, how you needed to do it for yourself. It's you needed a cheat day. It was okay to have a cheat day. I did not have a cheat day, but I'm just saying if someone were to do this as a, a lifestyle and they have an event coming up, say in a couple of months and they would have liked to lose 10 pounds or whatever, 
this is something you can do. Go find a nice easy workout for yourself that you can enjoy and then you can still have a nice meal with your friends and family if you need to go out but just be self-aware like hey let's not indulge on like three to four slices of pizza or that extra teriyaki. Don't go back for seconds, whatever. Um, you know, stay away from carbs and drink a lot of water. No sugars. That was another hard thing to do. But the results were actually quite nice to have. Now, another interesting thing I'm betting you guys are wanting to know is blood work and what all the different changes that I have had. So this year I took two different blood panels. I took one right before I started this diet and then one the day before I ended this diet. And let's take a look at the results and see what those are right now. So what we can see with a bit more extensive uh, blood work and liver panel, we can see that the first page, everything seems to be fine, still within relatively normal but it's not until we get to the second page that we start seeing one abnormality, but it really wasn't that much high. It was a 0.1% higher. Now, as we can see, the albumin at the end of the month was only a 0.2 higher than at the starting point, so it wasn't that bad. But however, we can see there are a quite a few other abnormalities. The glucose was a little bit higher than normal. The bun count creatine ratio was a little low, but again, as you can see, it's only one point low. And as I talked to the doctor, a lot of this stuff can occur during a fasting time. Now, at the beginning of this whole diet, my cholesterol was a little high. And again, that is kind of to be expected of me because, you know, I was slightly preparing to be a little bit heavier. And, and so that's, I just didn't know. But last year when I talked to my doctor, she was like, well, maybe just diet for a month or two. Now, I don't know why they did this, but they reorganized everything up. And so the cholesterol will be in the next panel, but you will see that it is lower. But you will also notice that at the end of this month, you will see that my ketones have a uh, trace. However, this is also to be expected. If you see my first video, ketones, and your body goes into a ketone stasis. Now, doctors say this is because of fasting. So make sure before doing any type of extreme dieting like this, consult a physician or doctor about this and any concerns that you may have or they may have with your own physical state. Now you'll see at the fourth page of beforehand, you'll see a slight increase of cholesterol again. But like I stated earlier, uh, the fourth page will show you that my cholesterol then dropped extremely by the end of the month, reaching that nice healthy point of cholesterol and intake. So really what comes out of this is to consult your doctor or physician and just be aware of your ketone state and listen to your body. Now, a lot of these results are very similar to what I had before last year. Now, when I talked to a doctor about the abnormalities, uh, they told me that it was actually kind of surprising because of the type of fasting I was doing. And in fact, it was either the results were kind of normal because I was doing a fast, and then they highly encouraged me to take an additional blood panel about a month to 90 days after the fact. So maybe I will be doing that uh, later in a maybe short or later video to see how my body is balancing back out. But as you can see, this is a completely safe and healthy thing that you can do. Now I'm going to state if you do have health issues, consult a doctor before even attempting to do this type of diet. This is on the extremer side of dieting. If you've ever fasted before, you know what I'm talking about. And if you are going to do this, make sure to drink plenty of water and at least take a daily vitamin. You need that vitamin. You need some kind of a salt in your body. Trust me. Um, yeah. So now whether you're doing a 46 day long extreme beer fast or doing a 31 day long beer, mostly only diet where you have a small meal a day, it just showed you the amazing power what a beer can have. Ugh, it's basically your lifeblood. So, see you guys in the next video. Cheers.